thank you so much for joining me today. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is why diabetes is so stressful. Psychologists talk a lot about this concept of diabetes distress. And what that really is about are just those negative emotions that people have because of the everyday tasks and demands of diabetes, like feeling frustrated, feeling worried, feeling angry, feeling exhausted, feeling guilty. I'm looking at the moms <laughs> um, that come just from living every day with diabetes. And then um, psychologists also talk about this other idea called diabetes burnout. And what diabetes burnout really is when you are just so chronically extended, so overwhelmed by the demands of diabetes that it's gotten to the point where you really feel like you want to give up. But distress happens. Everybody that lives with diabetes or loves somebody that has diabetes is going to experience distress at some point in time. This is not a psychiatric condition. This is not something where if you're feeling distressed, you need to go run to a mental health professional. It is a normal emotional response to the specific challenges of living with diabetes every day. It's normal. It's expected. It's universal. Everybody experiences it. And it can happen like when you were first diagnosed, and it can happen years later, and it can come and go, right? Have you guys ever had those experiences where you're just feeling diabetes distress? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, all the time, all right. <laughs> So when um, children and teenagers have a lot of distress related to diabetes, that actually is more closely associated with their A1C than even depression. So there's something about just feeling just exhausted about living with diabetes and that frustration that can actually affect your A1C. And we know that when you're distressed, you also do less of the daily diabetes stuff that all these doctors and nurses are asking you to do, like count carbs, um, or really take the time to do that. You're like, I think this is a four <laughs> unit meal, you know? And, um, you know, it's harder to check blood sugars or to monitor if you're on a CGM or to respond to the arrows mm -hmm. um, or to bolus or pre bolus, right? Um, before Meals. And that's really hard to do because you're hungry <laughs> and you're supposed to wait. And that just like is really annoying. When you're in a space where you're just more frustrated or more distressed, it can be harder to do those things. And then that can lead to suboptimal control. There's also some research that in teenagers that if they try really hard to avoid stuff and talk about things like, I'm fine, it's good, how you do, I'm fine, you know, let's not talk about it, I'm okay, I'm fine. Um, that, so we, in psychology, we call that sort of avoidant okay. coping, sort of like, I'm going to ignore it, even though it's really stressful and not ask for help, that that actually leads to feeling more distressed. But the nice thing is that teenagers that have really good friends, friends, really amazing friends that really get it and are there for them and are cheerleaders, they have a lot less distress and it actually helps prevent depression. One of the things that we know is that distress in children and teenagers is really, really common. My team did a study where we looked at distress in just under about a thousand teenagers. And some of the things that um, they really found challenging were things like their family and their friends just really didn't get what it was like or understand what it was like to live with diabetes. And the truth is that Outside of diabetes, there's almost no other place where we expect this level of perfection of ourselves. Sure. Yeah. You know, isn't that interesting mm -hmm. that we put this incredible pressure for perfection on something they, where really it's actually impossible to be perfect? Every day is different. Every, every day is different. Every day it's, you know, one day you have a really good day and you're upbeat, especially when I go to work. If I'm, a, if I'm at work and I'm upbeat, and then sometimes if I come in and I'm a little moody and I know why I'm moody, and everybody's like, hey, what's going on? And I, I can't give that same energy. It's hard, it's very hard. And I think with being a mom, you know, you have to nag your kids about so many other things. Did you do your homework? Did you pick up your room? Did you do your chores? And then this is one more thing you have to be that kind of naggy mom about sometimes because you know that extra snack, that one more handful, 
or whatever is going to affect their blood sugar, isn't it? It's frustrating because you're projecting a lot of what you can't control onto your children. So, but it's hard to stop eating when you're low, even if you've had like yes. whoever did the 15 yeah. uh, grams of carbohydrate and then wait 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes never had a low. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, right, right. What you guys were talking about is that sense of perfection. Like I have to be perfect somehow in diabetes, and that is just such a source of distress. Um, and again, no other parts of our lives do we have that sort of sense of it has to be just right all the time. So it's kind of odd to me that there's this message mm -hmm. out there in the diabetes community that perfection is possible when it's not. There have been some nice studies that have looked at using um, different techniques. A psychologist call it cognitive behavior techniques, which is about thinking about the, um, the automatic thoughts in your head, like the words that you use to sort of explain why things are happening. Sometimes people are more negative. They're like, oh, here's another example of how I always do everything wrong, mm -hmm. would not be the most adaptive mm -hmm. approach. But instead, like, today is not the best day I've ever had, but tomorrow uh, it's going to be better, right? And those kinds of like looking at sort of the narrow and specific versus, oh, here's another example of how I'm a failure. If you learn some of those techniques, it can really reduce some of the distress that people experience. And that also um, improves, actually, learning some of those techniques improves um, glycemic control, A1C, which is kind of cool.